This is Julie Pearson Little Thunder. Today is December 8th, 2011, and I'm interviewing Mary A. Dare for the Oklahoma Native Artist Project, sponsored by Oklahoma Oral Histories Research Pro Program at Oklahoma State University. We're at Mary's home here in the country in Stillwell. Um, Mary, you're a descendant of Cherokee beloved woman Nancy Ward and an early Native woman painter. You divided your efforts between art and education and community service. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Oh, you're welcome. Just one little correction. This is Sequoia County. <laughs> <gasps> okay, thank you. <laughs> where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, I was born uh, just up the hill from here uh, in my uh, grandparents' home and grew up here and uh, really wasn't anywhere else very much until uh, I went to school at Baycomb. Home College, and uh, that was my first time to be really away from home. And, uh, then I went to uh, Northeastern after that, and um, later married and had four children. Did you, um, growing up, did you have any brothers and sisters? Or? I have uh, one full brother, and I have a half-sister that's older than I am. What did your folks do for a living? Well, my dad was uh, a disabled World War I veteran, and he didn't marry until he was almost 40, and uh, married my mother. She was uh, a widow, and she had a, a little daughter. and uh, uh, She had come here from Tennessee, and met my dad, and I think they only knew each other a couple of months when they got married. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, my dad was uh, sick a lot because he had been uh, injured in the war, and uh, so uh, he died when I was seven years old, and my brother was two. So you were born in your grandparents' house. Um, you were close to your grandparents on your dad's side of the family? Well, they had passed away, and so it was just uh, my parents and uh, my brother and sister and I that lived there, but um, I had aunts and uncles that lived all around, you know, where we lived, and my aunt and uncle that lived here at this house, and uh, I had uh, two other aunts that lived up just up the road from us and an uncle, and so uh, uh, we had a lot of family around, cousins, you know, so that was that was really good, and a lot of pretty important family history, even in terms of the whole the whole tribe. What what kind of stories did you hear growing up? Oh, I heard a lot about Cherokee history. <laughs> <laughs> we had one aunt that lived uh, about a mile up the road from us, but uh, she she came often. She didn't have any children. And uh, she had gone to the seminary at Tahlequah, and uh, she, uh, Cherokee history was on her mind all the time. <laughs> and other family members would, uh, her name was Winona, and they would say, after a while, they'd say, well, let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a school teacher, uh, part yeah. school teacher. She too. had been a school teacher, and, and so had my uh, two of my other aunts, and uh, so that was, you know, a part of it, I guess, too. <laughs> what is your first memory of doing art? Well, doing art myself, I went to uh, school here at, at Badger uh, grade school for several years before we, before my dad died, and we moved into town for a while. And uh, uh, I did some little, you know, basic art projects that I enjoyed doing down here. And I remember my aunt that lived here kept one of my little drawings for a long time. It was just a, you know, thing that first or second graders would draw, but she kept it and made me feel good, you know. And I had a first cousin that taught art at the high school in Salisaw, and uh, she encouraged me a lot with drawing. and. In fact, all of my cousins enjoyed drawing and were good at it. You know, they, uh, 
they didn't do it professionally, but they just liked to draw every once in a while. And um, so I was influenced, I guess, a lot by, by them. So you didn't really have any um, experiences, art experiences in primary or secondary school that stood out strongly? Mm. No, I had some really good art teachers. I mean, yeah. they encouraged me a lot. I'm, uh, the curriculum wasn't much at that point, you know, but uh, they were very encouraging, very nice ladies. And uh, one of them was uh, Dorothy Pointer and uh, Elizabeth Black and my cousin, uh, Loris Dickey. And they um, influenced my decision to go into art. However, Loris... Being an art teacher, she told me that she thought it might be a good idea to have a minor in uh, elementary <laughs> education, too, <laughs> or something else. So I did minor in elementary education. Had, were you doing any Indian subject matter as a child, or just... Mm, just basically drawing anything, you know, that came to mind. You know. When did you see your first piece of Indian art, like a... Anymore. I guess when, to, when I went to Bacon, uh, you know, uh, Dr. West was there at that time and uh, I had classes there. And that's when he had us to um, do research and uh, talk to people and that kind of thing and, and then do drawings and paintings. So that was my introduction, I guess. My first piece that I uh, entered in an art show was when I was in school at uh, TU um, in 1967. Uh, I decided to, uh, I was going to get a, a master's degree in art. And uh, so I went to school over there for a year and took some art classes. And Alexander Hogue was my teacher, painting teacher there. And he encouraged me to enter the Philbrook show with one of my paintings I'd done in class. And uh, so I entered and uh, won a, an honor mention. Turned out he was one of the judges, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was, it was encouraging. Oh, sure. And uh, so then the Five Tribes Museum started having uh, competitive shows and I entered some things there. I was mo motivated primarily by uh, money, you know, because I had, uh, by that time, four children, and uh, I uh, wasn't working full time on, you know, off and on, and so that kind of added to our income. <laughs> just to go pick up a little bit at Big Home, you you were there just one year, I guess. What? No, I was there two years. You were there two uh, years. Yeah. What kinds of things did you learn in terms of like an art foundation and? And were they under Dick West, or did you have different teachers? Um, Dick West was my only painting teacher, and I also had silversmithing under him. But um, uh, Mrs. Spinks, Alice Spinks, uh, taught me a lot of uh, traditional things like moccasin making and weaving and things like that. And from there, you went on to Northeastern. Is that right? Um, were you um, taking art classes there? Yes, I took um, painting and art history and um, um, silk screen making. And um, I think I took a watercolor class, yeah. Were you doing any Indian subject matter there, or? Mm, primarily, you know, I was a young person and I did whatever was required for the classes. <laughs> right, it, that was overly encouraged. I guess. <laughs> Alice, um, let's see, uh, Miss Allison, Ruth Allison, uh, was a teacher there, and George Calvert, and um, I learned quite a bit from them. I learned um, a lot of basic things from uh, Ruth Allison and uh, George Calvert taught the art history and the painting class. So 
is that when you studying under Alexander Hogue, you were, um, and he was teaching watercolor, is that right? Uh, oil. Oil. Oil painting. Yeah. Is that sort of when things gelled for you in terms of entering this piece at the Philbrook Annual? And well, I, I guess I probably wouldn't have entered um, if he hadn't encouraged me to enter. You know, it was a piece I'd done in class. and. Uh, what was the image? Uh, actually, it was a uh, kind of a cubist kind of thing, but it was of a um, a group of uh, dancers entering the arena, and um, uh, I think it had kind of a blue. Uh, a lot of the colors were blue in it, as I remember. And I think uh, I think that painting belongs to to you. I think mm. I believe. And there had, I'm trying to, let's see, I think Jimmy Carroll Five was one of the first women to win at Philbrook, wasn't she? You know, I don't know. Um, but I'm just thinking there Jimmy probably Carroll. had been yeah. a lot of Indian women painters entering. Were there, were there a number in that dinner? 1967? Well, I don't remember. Um, I really didn't, uh, had never maybe gone to an art show before, you know. I, I remember going so to So what that was show. that like? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when you take four kids with you, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Keeping I them out of the pool out the back. Is <laughs> it's your focus. <laughs> um, you also took watercolors, though, at TU from Woody Crumble, is that right? Yes, I enjoyed that a lot, yeah. I'm not, I never did think of myself as being a good watercolorist, but I, I can appreciate good watercolor. <laughs> and of course, you t you two had interests in common in terms of subject matter. What, yes. What was one of the good things that you got from those lessons? I think just uh, seeing him as a Cherokee person who was teaching there at TU that was rewarding, you know, and. Uh, getting acquainted with him. I hadn't known him before. Now, when you graduated from NSU, you had your bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. and you were, could teach. And I, I went to teach in Tucson, Arizona, my okay. first year out of school. My roommate and I, who was also Cherokee, Jean Christie, uh, we decided we wanted to go somewhere. We'd never been out of the Cherokee Nation, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, very few times, and so we uh, applied to teach at Tucson, and we were accepted, and so we went out there. And uh, as it turned out, my younger brother went with us. Uh, he was still in high school, and I don't remember how that happened, but he went out there and he went to high school at, in Tucson and, and uh, stayed out there with me. And uh, was out there for a year, and then my uh, to be a husband. Uh, he had been in the Army at that time. I'd met him at Bacon, but uh, he'd uh, quit school and gone into the Army, and he'd come back from Germany, and he came out there. And so we got married in Tucson, and uh, then we went... Uh, we now, were you teaching at a government school? No, I was teaching at a public school. Public school, school. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was... Uh, Primarily Mexican American children. Mm -hmm. I think I had a couple of children that weren't, but most of them were. It was in a neighborhood where a lot of uh, Mexican American people lived. Uh, brand new school. It was real nice. Had a wonderful principal. She was a really nice person. And uh, then we came back to Pawnee. Pawnee. My husband was Pawnee, and we stayed there for about six months, and then we went to Dallas on one of those relocation projects, which, uh, that was really an experience. <laughs> I bet. So you two hadn't started doing arts and craft shows necessarily yet? No. Not in Arizona? No. What, what was it like plunging into big city life in Dallas? Oh, I, it was, I didn't like it, uh, the first night we were there, 
I guess it was the Bureau of Indian Affairs that, you know, were telling us what to do and everything, but they told us to go to this hotel to spend the night. That was the awfulest place I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then they took us to this um, uh, apartment unit place where they were putting everyone. And we lived there for two years, and our first son was born there. And was there daughter, another two. Indian family there or two? Oh, there were, Latin. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Indian and Mexican mm -hmm. uh, were in that. They had it uh, segregated at that time. There were black people in one area and Mexicans and Indians in another area and then white people in another area. And uh, there were new apartments, you know, they were nice. Um, but um, it uh, I wasn't really an enjoyable experience. <laughs> Your husband looked for work, and did you? He looked for work. He, you know, uh, there was a lot of prejudice. Um, he had had uh, two years of college, but um, he found a job uh, making boxes. And uh, I uh, didn't work at that time. Our son was born, and, and then I, I did get a job working for the health department down there and was working there when our daughter was born and uh, then uh, I came back and uh, got a job uh, teaching at Oklahoma City first and then transferred to Tinker Air Force Base. I worked there uh, for about a year and a half and then went to teach at Lawton at uh, Fort Sill Indian School for finished out a year there, and then we went to back home. Uh, he went back to school, and I was working in the office there. So during the, this p period, are you painting on the weekends a little bit? No, or? I didn't paint at all during that time. I, I sewed, uh, you know, uh, made most of our clothing and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't do any painting or anything. And I understand your husband passed away when your kids were fairly young. Uh, we were living in uh, Muskogee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you sort of had to really focus on earning a living. You were the primary. Actually, I had, uh, when my youngest son was born, it was a really hard time for us financially. Um, my husband was in the hospital at that time and um, I wasn't working. I had worked before he was born, but um, I started working at the Murrow Indian Children's Home. First as a tutor and then as a secretary and then as a, uh, an assistant to the superintendent. And then when she left, they asked me if I would take her place. And so I did that for four years. So I was there a total of 10 years. Um, now, you were aware that Nettie Wheeler was dealing yes. art there, uh -huh. um, but you just didn't have time to really explore selling I didn't. Her. I didn't do very much. About the only thing I did was uh, do some entries for the Five Tribe Museum, and, mm. and um, I might have done some more entries for Philbrook. I can't remember for sure at this time. I think it's it's so interesting because here you are an artist and you're working at Murrow and then I understand I don't know if you were the one who brought Joan Brown in did you bring Joan? She uh, we had gotten acquainted somewhere I think through a mutual acquaintance or something and um, she uh, was looking for a job she had several children and. Um, so she came to work there as a secretary when I became director of the children's home. And so she told me that you said, Joan, you can still do your artwork while you're here. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, we didn't at night. You right, know, right, right. We worked at night. I remember I would paint nearly all night, some nights getting something ready for a show, you know. And okay. Yeah, I was wondering how you squeeze squeeze that in, yeah. and and I know that um, 
she tried to do a lot of art things with the with the children. Did did you sort of well, help with that too? As or? she was there for a while, uh, we were able to. Um, she came to work more with the children, and we had another person that did secretarial work, and then we also had a person that uh, uh, did some counseling with the children too. And so um, she came, kind of worked into a different position. Right, yeah. right. So you were occasionally painting all night. Did you show with the galleries um, at all during not, that time? Uh, not very much. Uh, when. Um, when I got involved with the Daughters of the Earth group. Which was in the mid-80s, is that right? I right? believe so. Um, we uh, showed with galleries in uh, different states. I think the first show we had was in Oklahoma City at a gallery. And was I it sold, Doris Littrell's gallery? Yes, mm -hmm. I think so. And I think we each were asked to have five or six paintings. I didn't think to ask you, but when you were when you were in Muskogee, did you know the Tiger family? Um, I was acquainted with them. I didn't know them really well, but um, uh, there was a uh, Peggy at that time, I think, this was after Jerome had passed away, and uh, uh, she had some foster children or some other children that lived with them, I think. And um, I think uh, one of the boys was acquainted with my children or something. Anyway, I remember taking him home one time and going out by their house and and then seeing them at art shows, you know, the children. And I always tried to encourage them to do their artwork. And uh, they always seemed to be glad to see me when I see them, you know. <laughs> but I didn't know them well. I don't know Peggy really well, you know, at all. Were you thinking, it, it must have been kind of hard having to work all these jobs and really having to squeeze your art in, in your spare time. And I know that's one thing that brought together the, the Daughters of the Earth group. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of us were doing <laughs> pretty much the same thing, you know. <laughs> right. So. Do you remember how it, how it started, or? I believe uh, uh, Virginia Stroud was the one that got the idea for the group, and uh, she uh, was acquainted with, you know, all of the artists that were involved, and uh, so uh, <laughs> that's my bird clock. <laughs> Pretty. You'd think being out here in the woods, <laughs> it would be quiet. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> uh, but um, And some of the, the artists that were with the Daughters of the Earth group, I had known, you know, before, and others I got acquainted with, you know, by being involved in that group. And we had a lot of fun going out of state, and sometimes we went together as a group, and sometimes we just would meet, you know, at a gallery somewhere, wherever we were um, having a show. And uh, and there weren't uh, nearly as many women painters during that period. But how did the public um, react to your work? Well, I guess it, it was pretty well received. I, sales were good, you know, and. Uh, the first show, I sold everything I had, and so that was encouraging. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that was in Oklahoma City, and then I don't remember exactly the order of the shows, but we had one in Atlanta and uh, one in um, uh, Colorado, um, and let's see, Minneapolis, I believe, and uh, in. Um, Nebraska, at Omaha, I believe. And did you find it sort of fed your creativity? To because oh, I guess you were yeah. painting in between, and you had these shows going. And we had a show <clears throat> once a month, and so that's a hectic we, schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we had to have five or six pieces done, you know, to take, and so that was uh, it. Kept us busy, and it it was it was interesting. 
uh, and going to the shows. I think the, gr uh, the group of us went together either to Minneapolis or to uh, Omaha. It might have been in Omaha. Um, uh, we drove together there. And then uh, my daughter and I drove down to Atlanta together to that show, and that was a nice trip for my daughter and me to be together. And did you get to go to any of the Cherokee homelands down there or historic places? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, <coughs> uh, we went uh, on our way back from Atlanta. I believe it was on our way back. We stopped at um, Adairsville. <laughs> I'd always heard about it and wanted to see where my, fam my cool. dear family had come from, you know. And so that was really exciting because... Uh, there was a Mrs. Adair that lived there. And uh, we stopped and asked if there was anyone named Adair. And they said, well, yes, that old house over there, there's a lady, Mrs. Adair. So we went over there, she was sitting on the porch. And she invited us in and showed us old pictures. And she, her husband had died, but she said, I'm sure he was related to you, you know. <laughs> and uh, that was really exciting. And then we went out to look at another old house out there, and a couple of men drove up in a pickup, and they asked if we were interested in the house, and we said, well, it was just an old house, and we were, you know, curious about it, wondering if it dated back to the days of the Cherokee, and, and uh, the man said, well, he owned the house, but he didn't know. And but he said, my wife is Cherokee and she hasn't been feeling well lately. Would you just go up to the house and visit with her? <laughs> wow. So we went up to the house and visited with his wife and uh, told her we were Cherokees from Oklahoma, you know, and uh, and she was really glad to see us. And she had grown, had uh, been raised in Georgia, but she identified as being Cherokee. And so it was it was an interesting experience. And, and we saw an old house right in Adairsville that um, I was just drawn to. It was an old two-story house at the edge of, edge of town, the old Adair, Adairsville site. And so we were told that it was, uh, well, I think the people that were living there were renters. And they told us the man that uh, was in town was the owner of the house. And might know something about the history of it. And we went to see him, and uh, he was just kind of curious about us, and he said, ask if we wanted to buy the house, and we said, no, we didn't want to buy the house. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was, as it turned out, I found out later, it had belonged to one of our Adair family that had built it back before the removal. So, mm. but I didn't find that out until the years later. Mm -hmm. so, so that was a, an interesting experience. How had your how had your style and your palette, your kind of how had they evolved from that first oil that you submitted at Gilcrease, which was sort of cubist, I think you said, <laughs> um, to these Daughter of the Earth shows? How was it different? How was how were you finding your? I think I I experimented with a lot of different things. And um, uh, different styles and so forth. Uh, Were you still painting in you know, oils, or had um, you moved away from that? I uh, I painted in oils some, but I kind of moved away for a while and worked in gouache uh, uh, for some of the show entries. And uh, later went back to painting in. Well, I went into painting in acrylic later. Uh, Mr. Hogue uh, was not familiar with acrylic at the time. It was new, and uh, he was kind of suspicious of it. And <laughs> so everything we did in his painting class was done in oil. But uh, later on, I did some work in acrylic on canvas. And, and then I did some work in uh, fabric, mm -hmm. uh, stitching and that kind of thing, too. We'll take a look at one of your fabric pieces here. Um, so women, both as the subject of traditional stories, like um, Selu, am I pronouncing it right? Selu. Yeah. Um, are 
and also women as historical figures have been an important vein in your work. Um, how do you approach that di differently, perhaps, than a male artist might? Well, I think, um, I think male artists are primarily interested in male subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, women, uh, you know, I think it's because that's closer to them, you know, and of course women, uh, being women, uh, have an interest in what women and children are doing, you know, and that kind of thing. And so a lot of my work uh, featured, has featured women and children doing things. Yeah, I, I think the style's so interesting because it's, there's a few elements of that, you know, flat style. Sometimes well, you'll do the outlining or you'll have some negative space mm -hmm. in some of the pieces I've seen. But then you have these more realistic elements and also some fanciful elements sometimes too. Uh, the flat style um, was, uh, I started doing that when I had classes with Dr. West and that was the style that he, I don't know if he encouraged it, but that was the style that he primarily did. And uh, so, a lot of the work that we did in the painting class, we did in that style too. He encouraged us to learn as much as we could about our own tribes and to do uh, work that reflected um, things from our own traditions and background. Um, your art's on several book covers. Did you, uh, were these, uh, did the author sort of commission you to do do these illustrations, or did they see your work and decide that would look nice on the book cover? <laughs> I think the first uh, book uh, that I did was uh, the Selu uh, book um, uh, by Mary Lou Awiaka, and uh, she was a friend of Wilma Mankiller's, and uh, I kind of think Wilma suggested me to her. Mm -hmm. um, she called me and asked me if I would uh, illustrate the book for her, and uh, she, we worked closely together. She made suggestions, you know, about the illustrations, and uh, the illustrations were ink drawings, and then the cover piece was in color. And um, so uh, we worked with Fulcrum Publishing Company on that, and, uh, I enjoyed doing that. That was it was good to get acquainted with her. I I loved her book and the things that she wrote in it, and I feel like that was a real pleasurable experience and an honor, you know, to have been asked to do that. Later, um, Fulcrum called me and uh, asked if I would uh, like to do another piece, and I told them that I would. And they had a book by. Uh, uh, Joseph Bruchak and that and um, <laughs> you know I'm getting older and my, my memory's not getting too not, not improving uh, but he and another uh, author uh, did a book together and uh, he asked they asked me if I would do that it's interesting that I can't remember the other author's name it's when not Diane Glancy is it no mm -hmm. um but uh, he was the one that I mainly had contact with, and yet I can't think of his name right now. It'll come to me in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done a lot of <clears throat> commission work over the years? Not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of prefer not to because um, it's kind of hard to do what's in someone else's mind and, and vision, you know, and it's hard to... Uh, you feel like you might not please them, you know, with what you're doing or something. and So I kind of shied away from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you notice any changes in the gallery landscape from like the 80s to the 90s? Actually, um, I haven't worked a whole lot with the galleries. Uh, I've primarily worked with just entering my work in shows. In shows. And um, I worked with the Oklahoma City Gallery some, and 
the gallery in Tulsa a little bit, but mm -hmm. not very much. Because I've always had a, uh, most of the time I've had a full-time day job. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't really have the time for the uh, output that a gallery requires, you know. So your most important shows were like Five Tribes, um, Philbrook, Philbrook, uh, the, the Trail of Tears. Trail of Tears, the Heritage Center shows. What was one of the more important um, awards or honors you won for your Well, I guess uh, I won some Heritage Awards and I felt like that was a special honor because uh, um, Can you kind of explain about kind the of, Heritage Award? It's kind of a recognition mm -hmm. that your work speaks for your culture and your background. And uh, so I felt like those were the ones I most maybe most appreciated. Can you tell us a little bit about one of the paintings that you did that, that won the oh. Heritage Award? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Was it maybe a historical subject, though? Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sure it probably yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> it's I painted from uh, 1967 until actually the last two or three years. I haven't painted very much, but um, you know there was a long period that I did do work and. I don't remember a, a lot, lot of, of paintings <laughs> go out, and it's yeah hard to keep track. Are you a master of Irish tribes? No, I'm not. <laughs> Actually, I I haven't entered that show in a long time. Mm. Um, I uh, after I started working for the Cherokee Nation, I mainly concentrated on entering the show at the, here. And because I was busy, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, other things, and uh, I didn't uh, enter over there. The, the show at the annual, is that what you were saying? The annual, annual. Yeah. and the, uh, the trail tears. Now your son Daniel's a pretty well-known painter and sculptor, and your I guess your granddaughter, is it, has won a couple of awards in art? Or is it your daughter? Uh, my daughter. Is, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's yeah. it like to see Our this? Our oldest son. Okay. <laughs> What's it like to see that um, family tradition of art being carried on? Well, it was kind of discouraging. <laughs> uh, you know, with parents, uh, what you should tell your children is the opposite of what you want them to do. <laughs> I told them, you know, they always enjoyed painting from an early age and doing artwork, drawing. Uh, my daughter, we always call her sis. But, um, she went to school sometimes at TU with me, and she did little pottery and pottery class, you know, and things like that, and she enjoyed it. But um, I told them, I said, it's, uh, it's not something that's easy to make a living at, you know. And when you go to college, uh, look into other things that you'd like to do. Well, three of them majored in art. <laughs> and I was disappointed <laughs> in that. I was glad they went to school, went to college, but um, uh, they haven't worked in art except for Daniel. Uh, he has uh, worked full time in art, but uh, I'm proud of my kids, you know, and I'm proud of the things that they do that aren't art related as well as their artwork and I have some some of Sam's work over here that I've been matting for him uh, he's he went for a long time he didn't have time to do any work and lately he's been back painting again and doing some ink drawings and uh, he's enjoying that and he has a degree in art from Central State University and he went to Haskell first. Um, Mary has a degree in art from Northeastern, and she went to Bacon and OU first, and then to Northeastern. And Dan went to Bacon and uh, uh, the Institute in Santa Fe, and then to Northeastern. And 
you know, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the artwork that they do, but uh, it is a hard way to make a living, you know, full time. Um, you were on the advisory board for the Cherokee Nation Living Treasures uh, designation. That they oh, that's my daughter. Oh, is that your daughter? Yeah, okay. That's my daughter. Well, I was wondering if you had been nominated. <laughs> oh, not Treasures. that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I do know the former chief, Chad Smith, referred to you as one of a key group of people who, you know, help preserve Cherokee culture through their art. I uh, was a um, member of the Cherokee Artists Association for help get it re-established and that kind of thing. Uh, when was that? Um, it's been three or four years ago that uh, Chief Smith kind of encouraged a group of Cherokee artists to get together and, and uh, they had had a group that had been together uh, for a while, uh, several years ago. Um, and then they'd kind of fallen by the wayside, and uh, he encouraged um, Bill Glass was uh, instrumental in that first group and also in the second group. And so uh, we got involved with that uh, and really got some things, encouraging things done for the artist, I think, with the help of the council and that kind of thing. Yeah. I kind of dropped out of it because uh, you know, I'm getting older, and I felt like some younger artists should be involved more. And um, so I'm not actively involved with that group now. But um, <clears throat> Is your primary medium been acrylic the last 10 years or so? Mm, is it? I think probably so. Mm -hmm. Most of what I've done in the last 10 years has been for the... Um, uh, the Cherokee Nation, uh, they, um, the council set aside 1% of uh, building costs to purchase artwork. And they purchased artwork for the uh, new buildings that were being built, the clinics, the casinos, and so forth. And so, um, mainly my daughter has encouraged me <laughs> to, oh. to do things for those uh, uh, activities. And she and I work together, and uh, Dan and she and I work together on some things too. Collaborated which was all, on some collaborated, projects. And that was fun Great. to do. What are some buildings or casinos that you've got artwork in currently? Just, just about all of them, I think. But uh, the one at Muskogee, uh, my daughter and I, um, did two large, I think they're seven foot long pieces. Um, on canvas? On canvas. Let's see, we did four, she did two and I did two. We worked together on uh, a couple of them, I think, because uh, maybe she did one by herself and we collaborated on the others. So would that involve um, one of you kind of doing the research and the, the conceptual part and the other one painting, or did both. you both paint on? Okay. We both painted oh, on that's really the interesting. Both. <laughs> <laughs> That must be fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah. You sign your paintings in Cherokee and English. Did you have to... And I know the placement of the signature as well as the size is sometimes a hard call to make. Did you have to experiment a little bit to find your signature, or did you come up with that pretty quickly? Well, actually, when I first started painting, I, I signed my name, uh, Mary Adair Horse Chief. Uh, my husband was still living at that time. And um, I signed my name that way until my daughter started painting. And uh, also, she was work came to work for the Cherokee Nation, which I was working there also. And there was some confusion. Sometimes our mail would get misdirected to her to me, and and so um, 
uh, I uh, later on I just dropped the horse chief and went back to my maiden name and uh, I think probably about that time I started adding in the Cherokee Silvery uh, um, Mary mm -hmm. uh, with my name yeah um, what role does story play in your work or narrative <clears throat> Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. I guess it depends on what I'm working on. Because you do sometimes do just some decorative pieces. That, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes decorative pieces, but uh, like some of the historical pieces, you know, the narrative enters into that. I enjoy doing the, the historical pieces where, you know, you do research and that kind of thing. I've always been interested in... I guess Aunt Nona had it in effect uh, <laughs> because uh, I've always enjoyed learning about Cherokee history and uh, in, in fact I was instrumental in helping some relatives get together and we did a, uh, a family history book and uh, uh, so I did a lot of research, genealogy and that kind of thing too for that. but. Um, uh, just learning about people in Cherokee history, you know, and the things that they were doing and that kind of thing. Uh, I've uh, enjoyed going to archives in different states, in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia, and uh, Tennessee, and Chicago, and, you know, different places I happen to have an opportunity to go. Even Ireland. My oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> my brother and, and sister-in-law uh, took me with them to Ireland a few years ago. And so we went to Adair, Ireland, and we uh, spent a week driving around uh, in Ireland, going to places there. I have some star ancestry, and so we went to Coot Hill and, and uh, some places where the star family had come from. And so that was... A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, how important are titles in your work? Well, sometimes they're important. I like to try to uh, give a title uh, that will somehow tell something about the work and, um, of course, relate to the work in some way. Uh, and I've encouraged my, mainly my son, because, you know, he's he's been with me more to uh, uh, research and to, to work on narratives, you know, to tell about his work and the titles and that kind of thing. And I think he's enjoyed doing a lot of that, too. To have a little explanation, sort of, that goes with that. Did you pretty much do that throughout your career? Try to have... Um, Quite a bit, a depending bit on where it was, you know. uh -huh. um, And you cut mats, I guess. You cut mats for your own <laughs> work and for your yeah. son now. <laughs> that, do you well, have one of the nicer, newer mat cutters, or do you have? I, I have a mat cutter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was teaching art at Sequoia High School, I taught there for fifteen years before I retired, and. Uh, when I first started teaching there, uh, they asked me to teach six different art classes a day. And um, so I had a, um, a basic drawing class, and I had a painting class, and a traditional crafts class, a general crafts class, and uh, an art history class. And I had, actually I had two basic drawing classes for beginning artists because um, in the state of Oklahoma and I'm sure a lot of other states with the funding cuts and everything, you know, there's not too much art taught in the elementary and even the junior highs in a lot of places. Now in Tahlequah, they, they had a good junior high art program there. Uh, Mike Daniel was the mm -hmm. art teacher there and Dorothy Sullivan taught at the high school there. When, 
I was there. But um, uh, the uh, I I enjoyed having those classes where students could go from advance from one class to another. And then the state of Oklahoma started requiring that every student have an art class. And I thought, oh boy, they'll hire another art teacher, <laughs> you know, and uh, we'll have all kinds of classes. And they told us, you know, be prepared to teach more art classes. Well, as it turned out, uh, every student had to have art appreciation. And so they cut all my painting and, and um, we didn't hire another art teacher. Mm. The painting in the advanced art classes, and so uh, I did keep the native crafts class, and the rest of it was the uh, art appreciation. Yeah, appreciate Before that. that time, when I had the painting class and the uh, art history class, we learned about uh, in the painting class we learned about native artists, learned about their lives, where they went to school, all those things, and we. Uh, learn to paint, you know, mm -hmm. entered shows, mm -hmm. won awards, and in the uh, traditional crafts class, they uh, entered shows, won awards for their work, and beadwork, and basketry, and pottery, and all of those kinds of things. Uh, but uh, it, it got boring for me, you mm -hmm. know, teaching just one class most of the time. It was a little easier in one way. I only had to prepare, you know, for... <laughs> but at the same time, I can see how that's very stimulating, you know, both as a teacher and as an artist. Did I learned from my students. I was know. wondering, and did, did it enrich your own art? It really did. And uh, that's when I learned to cut mats and things. I ordered a mat cutter, you know. We learned to cut mats. <laughs> and because to enter shows, they needed to be matted and, you know... Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a mat cutter, a shrink wrapper, and you know, a lot of things that we we were able to get, and we were supported that way, which was wonderful. Um, what's your creative process from the time you get an idea? How does it work? Uh, I try to find out as much as I can if it's a historical piece, because I want to be accurate in what I. Uh, put out. I don't know that I always have been, but I've tried. Um, and uh, so I do research, and uh, then I start doing sketches. And uh, going back to my uh, training, uh, my early training, I do a sketch on. Uh, um, tissue paper first and then transfer it, you know, to my whatever media I'm going to work on uh, with um, uh, carbon or something like that, not, you know, and um, then I start painting. Do you carry ideas around in your head or do you write them down sometimes or? I used to. <laughs> <laughs> you had a little notebook? Or? The past few years, you know, uh, except for the pieces I worked with um, uh, with my daughter, uh, there's some pieces up at the uh, casino at Catusa, too, and some other places around. But there used to be some at the clinic here in Salisaw, and I don't know what happened to them. They're not there anymore. But... Um, I used to uh, do a lot of preparation, but in recent years I've made uh, moccasins for Miss Cherokee. I did that for several years until I quit doing that two years ago. And I've made two pair for Miss Cherokee. And um, I've made a few tear dresses uh, for people mainly family or friends, but uh, a few along, and um, shawls and, you know, just things like that. 
grandchildren. They always have to have things, you know. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and children, you know, my daughters-in-law, my daughter. and uh, I enjoy doing that, though. And, and I enjoy, uh, I've enjoyed making dolls and, and uh, dressing dolls and things like that uh, through the years. And so that's one of the things that I've done. To me, sewing is relaxing. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm ribbing it out, you know, <laughs> it's still <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> um, looking back on your career, what do you think was a... Uh a kind of fork in the road moment when you could have gone one way and you sort of decided to head down another path? Well, I guess uh, when I uh, when I had my children and uh, I was interested in art because I'd gone back to school, you know, to continue my uh, education in art. Actually, I thought about the possibility of teaching at the college level, you know, and I thought, well, I'll go ahead and get my master's at that point. But then uh, my two younger sons were born, and uh, at that point, uh, I started, uh, I had opportunity to work at the children's home, which was there in Muskogee. And um, uh, it was really rewarding working with the students there, too. And then the Cherokee Nation started expanding, you know, about that, uh, the, after I was there for several years at the children's home, and I got interested in working for the Cherokee Nation. And I'd been there for 10 years and uh, thought it would be good to do something different. And uh, so, uh, I started uh, to work for the Cherokee Nation, first at the Job Corps Center, and worked with students who were going into college. And uh, so at that point, uh, my children were getting older, they were needing more things and that kind of thing. My husband had passed away, you know, and so uh, I'd pretty well given up on really doing anything with art at that point, and I was just um, taking care of my children, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, then when um, the opening for an art teacher uh, came up at Sequoia, that's the first time I really had an opportunity to apply for a teaching job in art, and um, so I applied, and uh, was accepted, and I really enjoyed teaching art there. And it really kind of spurred a resurgence of your your own work. My own creativity. Actually, though, I was so busy, I didn't really do much. Mm. I illustrated some books, and I did a really large painting for a um, university in North Carolina uh, that were wanting a piece. Um, similar to the one that I'd done for the cover of the Sailor book. And mm. So I did that, that piece while I was working, teaching. But um, I didn't do a lot of work while I was teaching art. But it was so rewarding to see the students win awards, you know. And, right. And I had one girl that uh, she learned to do beadwork. And she uh, she had had some problems. And she was kind of down on herself, I think, at that point, and she entered the uh, show at the Heard Museum in, in uh, Arizona and won an award on her beaded barrette, sold it, and every once in a while I run into her. She married a Seminole from Florida eventually, and uh, but once in a while she comes back and I see her and she said she's still doing her beadwork, you know. <laughs> And then I had a student that won uh, a national award. Um, uh, he had his work put on a calendar, and uh, he was, he and I, <laughs> and actually he was an uh, exceptional ed student, and so the exceptional ed teacher and I and he 
went to Santa Fe uh, for a show, and then we went to Washington, D.C. And he had a little reception where he signed his calendars there, and we met a lot of important people in Washington. And um, I ran into him at the casino show where Dan had a, my son had a, uh, an exhibit not long ago, and, and Robert came up to uh, meet me. And uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time. You know, now he's married and has children, that kind of thing. But um, he uh, he said he finally got the painting back. <laughs> 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 that was uh, in the cal on the calendar. It was cover. on the calendar yeah. cover. <laughs> oh, fun! So I thought that was neat. And, and that was still a high point of, you know, both of our lives, really. Right, right. <laughs> and you had also had an image in the calendar, or you just had no. This, this was his creating that, and that his work. work was accepted for the cover. Right. And uh, so it was a special thing. Very you know, special. So, yeah. Um, what do you think has been one of the um, low points in your career? Oh, you mean in my art career? or I don't know that I've had any low points. I mean, I can't think of any. It's all been rewarding, I think. Of course, the high points were always when I would win an award, <laughs> you know, or make a sale and win. <laughs> Is there one of those moments that stands out? Or... Well, just uh, no, not in not anything in particular. I guess probably the first one was, you know, memorable because at the annual. Yeah, uh, at Philbrook because the. Uh, that was the first award I'd ever won, and I never thought of winning an award. <laughs> Did it have and a little it, bit of prize money with it? Uh, probably so. I don't remember that. <laughs> Were you nervous going up to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure I was. <laughs> well, is there anything we forgot to t talk about or anything you'd like to add before we look at your work? Well, I also did some work in... Um, uh, textiles in, um, you know, modern dress textiles. And so I entered a, a show at Santa Fe and won an award on, uh, I modeled it, <laughs> and won uh, an award on that. Um, it was a two-piece dress with applique work on it, and it was uh, turkey subject matter, you know, in the applicants. Mm -hmm. what, what year was this? I, I, I don't remember. It's been a number of years. In ago. the 90s, maybe? I think probably before that. Before that, yeah. at Santa Fe Indian Market. Yeah. Yeah. Did I, I wasn't able <clears throat> to go to the market um, after I, when I was teaching. Mm -hmm. And I started teaching at Sequoia in 1988, so it would have been before that time. Had you exhibited paintings at the market too prior to that? Um, well, that year. Oh, just that, that, year. that year. So you yeah, had clo was, both clothing and uh -huh. you entered paint. Okay. But um, I think that was the only year that I actually exhibited work out there. It's pretty exciting too. <laughs> Doing it in this clothing. Um, well, let's take a look at some of your paintings then. Okay. Okay, can you talk about this painting a little? Well, this is a, a painting I did for the uh, cover of the book, Selu, uh, Seeking the Corn Mother's Wisdom by Mary Awiatka. And um, this uh, uh, depicts Selu, the corn mother, and the uh, two children uh, down below are uh, representing the Cherokee Nation. And in the background, uh, you'll see some um, things that uh, were referenced in the book about uh, the uh, atomic power plant there, I think. And mm -hmm. there's a, um, some other things that represent today's people. And then 
the basket of corn uh, is the gift of Salu. Mm. That's really nice. Okay, how about this piece? <laughs> this was another. Uh, this was one of the illustrations for the inside of the uh, uh, Salu book. All the illustrations uh, in that book were in black and white and ink, pen and ink. And uh, this is another example of the uh, 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 Salu with the gift of corn. Yes, it's really nice. Got some really nice lines. Mm -hmm. This is just another look at that pen and ink from a different angle. Okay, how about this particular piece? Uh, this piece is one of uh, three that I did uh, with in fabric, and uh, uh, I sort of had my uncle in mind when I did this piece, and and my little son mm -hmm. uh, showing the uh, geese going north and, and uh, walking along. That's so nice. It just really translates as a landscape. There was a lady that uh, bought one of the pieces uh, sight unseen. <laughs> she uh, found out I was doing those uh, fabric pieces and uh, she did quilting, she liked quilting. So uh, she just, uh, I had it in that gallery in Oklahoma City and uh, she uh, just bought it and hadn't seen it at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Mary. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it, and I'm glad to have met you.